Hi there, and welcome back to another Bob Blast. Hi, I'm Bob Burridge, and this one is all about neutrals. I hear so much about neutrals. Well, why do I need to use them? And how do I use them? And where do I put them in the painting? I'm gonna try and answer all of those. Very first thing is, what is a neutral? You know, colors, when they come out of the tube, they're screaming bright, really screaming, pure, beautiful colors. Neutrals whisper, and they support the screaming colors. That's the only way I know how to describe it. I like to make a chart in my studio. Big chart, as you can see over here. These are the neutrals, what we're talking about. But how do you make a neutral? You, sometimes you take complementary colors, mix them together, Believe it or not, after adding a whole lot of white to it, you're gonna get this color. But you have to do it all the different colors, green and purple, it's gonna make a terrible color. You mix a lot of white into it, you get this somewhat of a khaki color. All right, and I make a chart on almost every combination I can think of for my own reference, and I hang it up in the studio. So if I want that color, I know that orange, yellow, orange, and this blue, cerulean blue, mix them together, add lots of white and black, mm-hmm, but a lot of white, and you're gonna get this great color. Say, wow, now, why do I wanna know that? Is so, when I go to put on these strong, bright colors on top of that, the whole painting holds together, and it kinda like solidifies the whole painting, so it doesn't look like two different paintings. Okay, done by two different artists, all right? It's a family of colors that really works. So you can see from there, then I come in with the stronger colors and always surrounding them with a neutral color. It brings out the beautiful screaming colors right out of the tube. You could be subtle like this. They all don't have to be super contrast like this, okay? So this is the fun part. Many textbooks are written on this situation here, and I'm gonna do it the simple way. Make a chart and follow it. And everybody has the philosophy on how to do it. This is mine, keep it simple, and let me show you some examples. So this is not exactly a science. This has to do with a lot of your artistic endeavors, but you gotta do it a lot until you feel comfortable. For instance, I was briefly showing you this. I wanted to, to get this to be kind of all together. I wanted to use yellow and blue. Yellow and blue, if I mix them together, it's gonna be somewhat green. I go right to my color chart. You can use anybody's color chart. And these are not necessarily complementary. But here's a yellow, here's a blue. If I mix up the yellow over here, add some blue to it, and a whole lot of white, you're gonna get these beautiful neutral tones. But then I come in with the yellow and the blue, and that's what makes that pop. So I'm really stretching my imagination here, but it's a good way of how I paint, and maybe you can adopt some of these techniques. So for instance, purple and green. Well, I got that from my chart. There's purple, there's green. Boy, you mix those two colors together, you're gonna get this really dark color. But now I'm going to start adding lots of white. Ooh, it softens it up like a charcoal color. Add a whole lot more white, and I'm getting closer to the color I'm looking for. I really like that as a neutral. And I'm a lot more white to it. Now that's the color I want. And can you imagine this color comes from that color? Or these two colors. Can you believe it? Yeah, that's why I make a chart because I can't believe it myself. So let me show you an example of mixing purple and green. I made some charts and some uh, color examples earlier so it would have dried. So, for instance, here's my purple. I'll just get my purple over here on the table. Here's my purple. Here comes my green. There you go. I'm gonna mix the two together. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. It's 
kind of a yucky color, right? And now I'm there. So what I do now is I can add black and a little bit of white. I'm adding a little bit of black, very little bit of black, and a whole lot of white. Pretty dark, isn't it? It's okay. A lot more water. Now a whole lot of white. Ah, there's the color I'm looking for. It's a beautiful neutral color from there. There's my neutral color. So I went from the dark, there's your dark. I'm adding lots of of the lighter version of this of the same thing. The same thing, lots of water. Now the dark color <laughs> will be, oh, well, let's go down into here. And make it some, a figure. Bring in some dark. Mix up some more of this. You see it's back and forth, back and forth. And that's what holds the whole painting together. Even more white, ah. Oh. I love painting with my fingers. There you go. And that green in here. I'm mixing it up in here, even. I usually do all my mixing off on the table. But to speed this up a little bit, you can see now we're painting. So not everything is a gray neutral. There's a lot of life into this. So much life, I'm gonna add some the head to this figure. There we go. A little bit of a shirt. Look at all the different kinds of neutrals I have. And I'm still only working with purple and green. Now when my painting instinct takes over, I'm gonna start bringing some more purple in here. It's pretty subtle. I don't know if the camera can pick all this up. I'm gonna come in with some, whoa. Some serious green now, whoa. It even surprises me. That's why I love painting. And let's come in with some, so I have the strong green, I have the purple in here, and the rest is, becomes neutral. So you can see I'm using white and black. That's why this whole thing holds together. Working on more contrast. With a little bit more purple in here, only because I'm more curious about what would happen if I add more purple. Well, I'm adding some hot pink to that purple and make it more purplish. Well, that's pretty hot, isn't it? So, I'm gonna tone it down with more green. It has a whole lot more interest to this whole thing. Also, you know I like to scrape and scratch in the painting. Again, it's pretty subtle. Well, that's the world's fastest course on working with neutrals, okay? But just know that you can make your own. You don't have to go out and buy a color. So take your, your normal color wheel, whether it's the standard universal color wheel or even mine, and just Start making a whole chart of the colors that are opposite to each other. Red, green, that kind of a thing. And mixing it all up with white and black. And, and then you put that all over the, whole, the canvas or the paper. And after that dries, now you come back in with the pure colors and bam, the whole thing comes together. Well, it's another way of having like way too much fun in the studio. Keep the brushes wet, play with the complementary colors and sit down all day long and just make those charts and put them up on the wall for your own reference. Well, I hope this helps you and explains a little bit about neutrals and how they work and why they work. It's a fun way of painting for me. Hey, I'll see you on the next Bob Blast and tell your friends. Thanks for watching.
Hi there, I'm Bob Burridge, and we're going to the Bahamas this February. I cannot wait to go there with you. Can you imagine doing a workshop, painting by the beach, by the poolside for five days of painting? I cannot wait, because it's most relaxed. I call it a paintcation. Can you imagine painting every day, but there's the bar, there's the beach, and we're right there, we're relaxed and we're creating wonderful paintings in this incredible Bahama aromas, the florals, and the, the wonderful aromas of the, of the food cooking, and the ocean right there, fresh air, and perfect time of the year to get away, right? And to have a great time. It's my favorite place. I call it a paintcation. What a great name for it, a paintcation. And we're going to be painting loose abstracts. Wow! So I'll see you there, and I cannot wait to paint in the Bahamas with you.